Can I tell you why I'm not that scared of uh, AI video, by the way? I think there's, well, let, let me at least get a screen region set up in case the clip bangs, okay? Why am I not that scared of AI video? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that people are like, this is going to uh, send us into the era of unreality and disinformation, to which I can only say without seeming unnecessarily cynical, we are already there. Probably been there for about eight years. It's certainly not going to get better, but we're through the looking glass regardless, in my opinion. So it's not like a shock to me. Uh, secondarily, at least for now, you know the, that lady who posted the essay about how she got scammed and it can happen to everybody because she passed 50 grand in a shoebox through a Mercedes window because um, she thought the CIA was protecting her from identity theft? Um, much like the people replying to that, I'm not going to be tricked by the AI videos as they look right now. In two years? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But also, this is, I've inoculated myself against it by not watching basically any video content except Michael Mann movies from 1983 to 2007. I'm not scrolling through uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, like getting my news and trying to figure out what the state of the world is from people, you know, fighting over a few tenths of a cent by promoting fake news. I'm just... I don't know. I'm out there in my community. I'm shaking hands. I'm kissing babies. Um, and thirdly, they all look like they, they all got a stink to them right now. You know what I mean? In the same way that like you are, it's impressive what it can do. But when you look at something generated by Mid Journey or Dali, you just know that it's got like that it's got that stank on it. It's like when you see a movie trailer and you're like, brother, I can't articulate why, but this is going to be ass. There's just something in the subtext that comes through that is giving like an ass vibe. Same thing with the, the, the AI videos thus far. I know this is as bad as they're ever going to get. But again, I, this is kind of like, yet I participate in society. This is why you should not be watching videos from anonymous content creators to begin with. I already don't believe anything that I saw on, I see online. I was the only due to saying the kangaroo video was fake. If anything, I was just early, okay? Because that one, all signs point to it being real. <laughs> it was not fake. Mm, enjoy that being the narrative, because in 35 years, people will be saying every video from the 2000s was fake, okay? Sometimes being early is just as bad as being wrong. Also, the, th the fourth reason is that I think I saw a tweet that I resonated with, which is that people have a bias that the way that things are going right now is the way that they're going to go forever. But we forget that humans have like a built in uh, DDoS monitor button, which is the cycling of people due to generations. You know, my generation, I fully expect millennials to get thrown into the mill and turned into flour by AI content. I fully expect 80% of my high school classmates to be like, yeah, it seems like it could be bad for propaganda, but on the other hand, I could generate infinite Harry Potter content based on exactly what I wanna see in the movie. Exactly what I wanna see in the movie is gonna take place in the movie and I can just keep making it forever. I could watch a new Harry Potter movie every single day. But I have faith that if those are your parents and you grow up with that, you know, you're 20 years younger, your generation will respond to that with aversion because whatever your parents were into is innately uncool to you until maybe you become their age. So I think they'll grow up being like, I want uh, more likely to be like, I want human stories. I want real human stories. I want to see what I don't want to see. I want to see something that challenges me. And then their grandkids are going to be the ones that are truly cooked. If it is skippity toilet videos on them. But then their grandkids, holy man, their grandkids are going to be watching the most challenging cinema you've ever seen. But then their grandkids are just going to be in the hollow deck. I don't know why we are uh, get a loading of this society today. But someone tweeted me. And they, they, this is not them being toxic. They said, I thought you'd want to know. I went to a burger joint in Austin. It was standing room only. There was only one hamburger on the menu with French fries. And three burgers and fries came to 
I replied to them and said, this is why people, and by people I mean myself, I don't know if anyone else has joined the movement yet. This is why people are 90s maxing. Bring back the 35 page menu. Someone replied to that, I would say justifiably, and said the bigger the menu, the worse everything on it is. I too have gone to the school of watching Kitchen Nightmares episodes on, on YouTube. So I understand where, where, like you're preaching to the converted here. But I replied, counterpoint, it's a restaurant, all the food is good enough to eat. I'm really, I'm, I'm bringing the 90s back, man. I feel it in my spirit. 92% of restaurant meals I have ever consumed, I would give a three and a half stars or higher. Now there's two possible, I mean, I guess there's more than two possible options. One option is that I'm an easy critic, in which case I would say based. It makes me happier than you, no disrespect. The other one is that you fucking suck at picking restaurants. My ass, I, it's got the trailer stink, bro. I think I'm good at picking restaurants. I, I filter the, the bad candidates out before I walk into them most of the time. Just go to Gotham every weekend? You would not catch me at Gotham. I'm 90s maxing. If I'm downtown and I want a steak, which, God forbid, happens more than once a year, you can catch me at... I'll go to the keg. I'm not, I don't have that high of a, an opinion of myself. I don't need to go to black and blue. I don't need to go to Gotham and get a $94 Delmonico steak. I'll have a $43 rib steak dragged through the damn weeds or something. What does a menu font say about the venue? I try not to hold it against a restaurant if it has a papyrus as its font. What I do instead is I look at that and I say, this place must be doing something right because they've been around since the font was cool. If you go to a Thai restaurant and the menu's in papyrus, then you know like that shit has been thriving in the city since like 1997. So you're probably in, in good hands. I don't want my restaurant that concerned with, uh, with its font choice. I want three chefs in the back who love to cook and resent the fact that they've built a business around it. I want them cooking recipes that have been passed down through the generations and they're only doing the business stuff begrudgingly as a result of the necessity of, of making money to pay their bills and live their lives. Getting a lot of plus twos here. Like you with streaming? I think that's true. <laughs> Don't you want a streamer who has a little bit of contempt for the audience? How could you not have a little bit of contempt for the amorphous concept of the audience? They yell at you all day. I don't trust a streamer who's like, you know, they've got over 500 people in chat and they're like, you guys make my day. I'm like, they make your day? They break your day? They shake your day? Like, you need, you need a streamer who's a little bit like begrudging about it. I kind of look at it like Seinfeld versus the Big Bang Theory. I kind of got the idea that everybody on the Big Bang Theory was like, this is a dream job, we're happy to be here. Jerry Seinfeld gives off the vibe of like, I'm better than you, but I'm going to come down from my ivory tower and give you some pearls of observational wisdom. And on a logical level, you should want to interface with the first more than the last. But for some reason, there's something of the... I, I, want, I want content that, that mogs me. You know what I mean? I don't want content that's like, here's what you're looking for. I want some content that hits you with like, uh, like they're, they're debasing themselves coming down to my level. I don't want your ghost, like, hey, Sora.ai, can you make uh, the lobster but with no negative emotions that come out? I just think, what about a, what about a cool like slice of life movie where people um, become animals? Nah, bro. I want to see Colin Farrell you know, sacrifice his humanity just to try to avoid becoming a lobster. I want to see how low and depraved the depths of humanity can get. You see this Casey Neistat tweet? This blew my mind. I think I saw it in 2020, but then I just like didn't realize how insane it was. Um, but then I saw it resurfaced on my Twitter feed and I said, this guy, he has to justify himself to me. November 29th, 2020, Casey Neistat. If you could be born at any time in history, when would it be and explain? 
He replied to himself, for me, 1900, fight in World War I, Roaring Twenties, Great Depression, fight in World War II, then experience the 50s and 60s in my 50s and 60s, enjoy my twilight years with the modern conveniences of the 70s and die in the 80s before all this internet bullshit begins? Are you fucking stupid? You might have actually picked the worst birth year in human history. People who got the, the low roll and were born in 1900... Like, they got cosmically fucked. Why would you ever choose to fight in either world war <laughs> instead and experience the Great Depression between them? Do you know what that is? Like from 1914 to 1945 is like 31 years of pure hell, man. World War I, it, dude said roaring 20s. Okay, after I got trench foot and PTSD, come back to the roaring 20s, prohibition, 18 months of drinking, you know, bourbon out of a bowling ball in a speakeasy underneath a fucking, like, laundromat or something like that. The global economy collapses. Then I'm on a barge to Europe to fight the fucking Nazis. That's the first 31 years of your life? That's, it it's, might be the, the wrongest answer if uh, you could possibly write, man. It's crazy. If anything, your ass should be born in, like, 1878 get a chance you could become a millionaire by inventing like a new sandwich too old to get drafted in the first world war rich enough to ride out the 20s senile during the second world war and then just fucking drift off bro then you're chilling yeah the civil war already ended i don't know that much about the antebellum era but i'm pretty sure everybody was just chilling right <laughs> right are you impressed that I know the word antebellum? And I did not learn it from the it's a quarter after one, I'm a little drunk and I need you now band. Antebellum is pre-war? What? You mean parabellum? I haven't seen that one yet. That's, that's John Wick 4, right? I thought I had something to say. Do you guys, well, you know what? I should put myself on the screen because you never know if this could be TikTokable. Steel Johto, I can only think of Steelix. Steelix is real. Final Evolution, Johto. You ever hear of a little lad by the name of Togekiss? You ever hear of a little lad by the name of Togetic? Have you ever heard of a little... Oh, I'm dead. Togekiss is Gen 4. Oh, for, for alligator! Oh, it's not Kecleo. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just score average, 8.4. Oh, bite me. Go back to posting about how much you hate yellow paint in video games. This argument over the yellow paint is blowing my mind, man. There should be yellow paint to tell you where to go. There shouldn't be yellow paint to tell you where to go. How about if you have designed a part of your game where you need yellow paint to tell people where to go, which seems reasonable to me, cut that and just put Slay the Spire inside of your game instead. You don't need yellow paint in Slay the Spire to tell you what to do. Just design around it, bro. I did, I had a, a tweet bubbling up though, and I said, I'll aggravate the football fan base, that doesn't bother me. I'm not going to ang aggravate the gamers because they don't have anything better to do than harass you. But I thought, you know the tweet that was like the, from Dave Oshry, the yellow paint virus has infected Final Fantasy VII Remake? I thought about referencing the tweet and saying the yellow paint virus has infected the Binding of Isaac. And then taking a screenshot of the first room where literally it has paint on the ground that's like, WASD to move. You know, the arrow keys to fire. And I was like, that would be sick. But I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'll just tell you I could have done it. Are you book smart or money smart? I, I linked it to Librarian yesterday. I didn't know, like I knew Jay Easy was running in his videos. I did not know that he was kind of quick with it. Like, I'm not talking about the music videos, but there's, like, videos of him training, like, running down the street chasing a car. And he's, like, he's speedy, and he's kind of lean with it, too. I didn't know. I thought he was just, like, a guy, but, like, he's, he's booking it. Hmm. Hmm. Ballot Joker? What is this? The presidential election in 2024? Can I say, by the way, listen, we don't get too political on this stream. <clears throat> I have sympathy for Joe Biden when he gave that press conference that was like, I'm actually not that old. I'm pretty virile. And then someone said, 
sir, how do you respond to the, I, the accusations that your memory is getting worse? And he said, my memory's so bad, I keep letting you ask questions. I don't need his recommendation. It's how totally bad out. is your memory, and can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I let you speak. I think that it's a gaffe, but I've been there, man. I'm not 84, and I've been there. Sometimes you get mad, and you're trying to cook someone, and in your head, you're like, if this lands, they're cooked, but it doesn't land right, and people are like, ooh, that's not good. It happens all the time, man. I, I, I respect him for going for it. That's, it is me and joke about. <laughs> What was the gaff? Well, he he didn't really like, you know, the the verbiage. It didn't come out like a, you know, like a like a rapier or something like that. Like it wasn't elegant. It was like it was a little clumsy. It was like he was hitting them with like a, a club or a vacuum cleaner or something like that. But it's like he had the the broken short sword from the start of Dark Souls instead of the Zweihander from the graveyard. Maybe say scimitar instead. We're canceling the sword because you know what it means, but someone else might not. We don't do that here, okay? We're all adults here. We're canceling the murder weapon because it sounds like it's one letter away from a crime. Grow up, all right? What's, uh, what's your conscience? What conscience? Would you just like, just like Stream talk? Of consciousness. Yeah, you, get, you just say things. It's a psychological exercise. All right, just off the top of the dome piece. Here we go. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. No barking from the dog. No smog. Mama cooked the breakfast with no hog. I got my grub on, but didn't pig out. Finally got a call from a girl I want to dig out. Hooked it up for later. As I hit the dope, thinking will I live another 24? I gotta go, cause I got me a drop top. If I hit the switch, I can make the ass drop. Had to stop at a red light, looking in the mirror, not a jack of green sight. And everything was alright. I got a beat from Kim, and she could do it all night. We're just gonna keep going here, huh? Did you... Was that I was very, very impressed by the up or? Like, yeah, did you just freestyle that? That was an original off the top of the dome. No. No. Yep.